are going to make Gravlox. Gravlox is a good alternative to smoked salmon and you can play with your flavors and make it at home. So, that's cool. Gravlox is a very, very old tradition from Sweden. After being salted, they used to bury the fish to cure for sometime months. Today, we are not going to bury the fish, but we are going to make two different versions and they will stay different lengths of time in the fridge. We are going to keep the fish in the fridge during the making of the dry rub. For the dry rub, we first need to roast our spices to release the aroma. I have black pepper, two teaspoons. We're going to have two little cute pods of cardamom. This is green cardamom. Mustard seeds. This is also two teaspoons. Two teaspoons of fennel seeds. Well, we can use anise, but I like to use fennel seeds because the fennel is a little bit more subtle and not as strong than the anise, but it is an anise flavor. Then we have a special treat today. Coriander from the garden. Our cilantro just went up to seed and so I picked some and we have coriander also from the garden, but from last year, and this one is dry. So I'm going to pick those little seeds, and we will have a distinctive flavor from the fresh coriander seeds. Okay, let's do our roasting. Our fennel seeds, mustard seeds, black pepper, coriander seeds, and our two cardamom seeds. Now we're going to toast those seeds for a very short time. You just want the flavor to release and when you smell it, it's ready. I think we got it. This is it. That's all there is to it. Look at our beautiful seeds. That's going to be great on our fish. Uh, I don't want to touch that pen, it's so hot. All right. Do you don't want them to be a powder? You just want to crush the seed, then they open up. Like this, the flavor is going to penetrate the fish. Those cardamom seeds, you just hold your mortar on top of them. Like this, they open and the seeds from inside comes out. Okay, keep crushing. I think we're good here. Put this aside. Now, as promised, our special ingredients of the day. Freshly picked coriander seeds. Let's, you know, you have to be a little patient on this one because you have to do them one by one. The flavor profile of those fresh seeds is going to be different than the dry coriander seeds, right? It's very limey and it has a freshness to it. It's kind of a cross between the fresh cilantro and the dry coriander on which you just squeeze a lime. So that should be very interesting. The only problem is you can't have them all year long, so that's a very seasonal little treat. Okay, this is about a tablespoon of fresh seeds, and I add a tablespoon of dry seeds, so for a total of two tablespoons of coriander seeds. Now, the final touch to the dry mix is, obviously, salt, because we are going to cure the fish with salt. So there is a little trick here. We have 100 grams of salt, but I put 80 grams of regular kosher salt and 20 grams of cherry smoked salt. 
So that's going to remind us a little bit of the smoked salmon. Then you have 40 grams of cane sugar. I like to be a little bit under half on the sugar because I had Gravlox where they put equal quantity of salt and sugar and to me Gravlox is, is not sweet. It doesn't need that sweetness. I mean the fish has its natural sweetness and that's plenty. And now our spice mix. Then you can put your green coriander seeds and give them a quick crush. Okay, here we go. That's our dry rub. Mix it and it's ready for the salmon. But before that, we're going to give that salmon a very festive color. So to do so, I remember, look at that. I did pick a bit from the garden and the greens, keep them. They are great to eat. We'll be grating the beets on top of the fish. So we'll stain the fish and give it that red color. So when you cut your slices, you're going to have the orange of the salmon and the red of the beets on top. You will see, it's very pretty. Let's get the fish. All right, here's our fish. Fish is going to go in that plate, but first you're going to put a plastic film on the bottom. Just unroll enough to be able to fold it on top. There you go. See this? That's the belly. And it's not that great in Gravlox. So it's better to just cut this. Then here is the piece of fish you're going to cure. Look how beautiful it is. See what I mean with the red? Look at this. Everything we touch beats turns red. One little trick if you want your flavor to penetrate, do a few incisions. It will also help release the moisture. Two fingers apart. There you go. First thing you want to put is the zest of a lemon put on top of your fish. Here you go, lemon zest. You always, always want to use organic lemon because otherwise all you're doing is grating a bunch of chemicals on your fish. Not such a good idea after all. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's enough. It smells so good. Now we grate our beet, which is our dye. Make sure it's all over the fish. Try not to grate your fingers. I mean, it will match the color, but there we go. It's enough. <laughs> I think, yeah, that's plenty. Look at this. Look. Oh. Now the dry rub. So I only salt my fish on one side because the skin side was facing down is going to get the salt from the salty water when the fish releases its water. Before you wrap, final little touch, which is the deal. You just do a very fast chop chop. God, everything smells so good, you know. It's, I mean, those ingredients are so fresh. It really makes a difference. Mm-hmm. So watch those fingers. Okay, that's it. Be generous. That's what, like one cup about here? Yeah. An homage to our friend Chef Ken Fornatero. He made that wonderful sake. Usually you use aquavit, 
which is a Swedish vodka. Here, we are going to use a sake and bring it into our Asian flavor register. Cover this very well. Here you go. Then you want to put the weight on that. I have a small cutting board with the perfect size. For weight, I'm going to put two cans. Here we go. So the first version is going to be in our fridge for 10 to 12 hours. So we will have it for dinner. And then the second version is going to stay for about 36 hours. And you will see it tastes different and the consistency is going to be different. And in the fridge it goes. I'm going to make two different salads. I had some leftover beets, so I will make a beet salad. And one of my all-time favorite is a celery remoulade, which is a salad made with celery root. It's kind of an all-season salad. I mean, it's a great winter salad, obviously, because it's a root salad. But in the summer, you can bright the flavor, and it's very nice with your garden greens. I'm going to start with the celeriac salad, the celery root. First, we are going to blanch half. Blanch means we are going to drop the celery root in salted boiling water for a very short time to just get that root a little softer. The other half has been marinated in shiokoji with the juice of a half of a lemon. This was not blanch, not cook, it is raw. Our celery root has been in the water for about two minutes. I need some ice water. There we go. To stop the cooking. See, it's boiling. And we are going to stop the cooking by removing it from the boiling water and putting it in an ice bath. Just let it cool off a little bit. We are going to julienne, meaning we are going to cut the celery root in very thin strips to make our salad. There you go, that's thin. What's important is for your strips to be about the same size. So they will react the same way to the dressing and cook at the same speed with the lemon and the chiokoji. You can also use a mandolin if you had one, but the knife does the trick. After being partly cooked, it's much more slippery than the raw vegetables. So you have to be careful, watch your fingers, okay? Don't forget, tuck them in. The chiokoji and the lemon are going to penetrate the vegetables and make it more digestible. All right. Now we are going to mix the two different preparation. That's going to be a little softer and this, the marinated one, is going to have a crunch. And our second salad is going to be based on the same principle, a crunchy vegetable and a softer vegetable. Let's make our salad dressing. We're going to make a mayonnaise, but a spin on the mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is made with a fresh egg yolk. I don't like to use raw eggs unless I know how old it is. So I do a soft boil, which is much safer. I boil my egg for five minutes. So the inside is still liquid. The yolk is runny, you see how soft. So that's going to give us the same flavor that you're looking for in the mayonnaise. But we're going to fill 
safe that way. Now, a good tablespoon of Dijon mustard. So crush your egg because I kept the white. And one good tablespoon of organic mayonnaise. You keep turning, you're going to mount your dressing. I use grapeseed oil. Little lemon. I will say a quarter, that's a half lemon. I'm not going to press all the juice out. Remember the old trick, you go through your hands and the pit stays out. That should be enough. Yeah, this is enough. Black pepper. Salt, one teaspoon and a half. All right, that's our dressing. I only put a quarter of a lemon because don't forget, I already put half of a lemon in my marinade. So all together, we're almost using a full lemon. You want to keep some lemon just in case because if your dressing was falling, what's going to bind it back together is the acid. So either the vinegar or the lemon in that case. Then mix this together. That's a good dressing. And a little bit of parsley, a big pinch. Just save a little bit to have fresh parsley on top. We're going to let it sit in the fridge for at least an hour. The longer it sits, the better it gets. All the flavors are going to blend together. In a way, it's going to almost cook between the dressing, the lemon, and the chio koji. It does keep in the fridge for three to five days. Uh, since you don't have the fresh egg, you don't have that issue of aging. And the chio koji is really going to help with the longevity of this salad. Last little touch for our celery remoulade. We are going to add some mustard seeds. I like to do our salad with the moutarde de mot because I didn't have any whole grain mustard. I soaked some mustard seeds in our rice vinegar. I'm going to add this to our celery remoulade. When seeds pop under your teeth, it's going to have a little bite to it. Extra bite, I should say. Okay, last little add-on. Cover and in the fridge it goes. The Gravlox has been in the fridge for 10 hours. Our weights did work. Yeah, so it's still pretty soft to the touch. Let's do a cut here. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful slice. We are going to wrap that larger piece back into the salt. Okay, let's put our weights. And that's going to go back into the fridge for at least 24 hours. This piece is going to keep longer because it's going to cure longer. This is a 10 hour cure. You see, it's not quite a sushi salmon, but it's still very, very moist, and it looks almost like a raw fish. It's not a raw fish. It has been sitting in salt for 10 hours, don't forget. Now we need to rinse it. By rinsing it, we are going to stop the curing. And let's do a final rinse in the ice water. You could do this under running water, 
but we're having a drought, so we're saving water by using those two bowls. Now we need to pet this dry. I like to use unbleached paper towels. Let's do a second drying. Okay, that should be good. Beautiful. I'm going to wrap this in plastic wrap and put it back in the fridge, but now the curing has been stopped. I will feel very comfortable keeping that fish for five days. We are going to try this tomorrow at lunch. I had some leftover beets from the making of the grave logs this morning and I decided to make a beet salad. Why not, right? I made a julienne and pickled a beet. We use our homemade rice vinegar for the pickling. And cook another one. Let's dice the cooked beet. We are going to combine those two together. This is a cooked beet I just diced. This salad is really a big assembly job. Let's put our pickled beet. You don't want to dump it because that's all vinegar. That would be too much vinegar. But look at this color, my God. Let me rinse my hands because it's going everywhere. For this, I'm going to use a hazelnut oil. I will say two tablespoons and a little bit of our rice vinegar. There we go. Little fleur de sel, one teaspoon. Then some fresh black pepper. Some chives from the garden. Cut in small pieces. There we go. Our beet salad. Let it marinate a little bit and all those flavors are going to mix and it's going to be lovely. Mm, that looks beautiful. Yeah, it's firm to the touch, but not too firm and it has a beautiful edge. Let's slice. Thin slices. I'm using a long blade knife, which is referred as a slicing knife. That's what works best. Look how beautiful. The edge is reddish and the center has this beautiful salmon color. So let's plate. I will cut about maybe four, five slices per serving. Yeah. One more slice. Okay, that's a good serving. So let's try that grab locks. Mmm, that's so subtle. All the flavors are punching in. I can test the difference actually between the two coriander we used, the dry and the fresh one from the garden. It's slimy. And the deal, the sake, it's there, it's there. But I mean, sake is very delicate and not a strong flavor alcohol. I used to uh, do it with gin, which was much more present. Now, let's put some 
lettuce, freshly picked. This is the speckled lettuce. Nice, right? This is a dish we can be add at different seasons. Here we're doing a summer version of it. This is our celery remoulade. Our root vegetable salad looks beautiful. And that can be made during the winter too. Let's have a little bit of our red beets. And we found those cotton candy lemon. They taste super sweet and they are a little bit pinkish inside. And then a little bit of flowers. This is the coriander or cilantro flowers and parsley flower, oregano flower. I think that's gorgeous. Little deal. Et voilà, our gravlocks, 10 to 12 hours curing time, and our two root salads. Beautiful. That's going to be so good. This looks like my favorite Sunday brunch. The big question is, is your Gravlox ready? It is. It has been in the fridge for a little over 36 hours, uh, maybe closer to 40. We have been filming and time flies, but it can be 36 to 48 hours. My personal test is I like it closer to the 36 hours and I also like a very quick cure of 10 to 12 hours what we did with the other half of that uh, fish. Let's look at this one and see what we have. That beet has really turned yeah. it very bright <laughs> pink. What a look gorgeous, your, ah, gorgeous your color. Though. This is what we're talking about. I mean, you see how the, the dyeing with the beets really took full effect here. It's much darker than the salmon that we only exactly. cured overnight. We need to rinse this under running water, you know, to get rid of the excess salt. You're all messy, you get to do it. Cold water. We have to dry that fish very well. Do it. And then further. Just squeeze it a bit? No, no, be gentle. I'm being gentle, yeah. but I mean, just yeah. pat it gently. Yeah, pat it gently. I, I'm not wringing yeah. it out. <laughs> pat it gently, don't break the fibers. Mm, let's see. Yeah. See yes. if it's pink all the way through. Touch it. You see how he has a little bit? Oh, yeah. Of, it's much it's firmer firm. than right. the other one. Right. And he has, still has some give. Sure. So it's not dry. What will happen if you leave it too long in mm -hmm. the salt? Then you get like a salmon jerky, which I've actually right. had yeah. before, and it's pretty good. Let's. Do a first cut, yeah. Beautiful, yeah. I'm starting to create an angle yeah. cut. Okay. But you see? It has, look at that. See how you have those two colors now? You have the salmon color, and then you have the red. So that's what we were trying to achieve. Beautiful. You know? That's really what your cuts are supposed to look like. Looks almost okay. like lipstick on it. Yeah, it's pretty, right? <laughs> It's very festive. So let's taste that little piece here. Yeah. Please do me the honor. Compares? Yeah. It's good. It's saltier. It's stronger it's saltier, than yeah. the other yeah. one. Yeah. It's also the first piece. So You yeah. want to taste the inner pieces yeah. for comparison? Well, because okay. that's really how you're going to taste it. Mm. You see, it's not as salty. Right. A no. little bolder mm -hmm. than the, the, sh the shorter cured exactly. one. And um, but it's really much firmer, yeah. too. It's like a lox oh. or a nova exactly. almost in consistency. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, here yeah, you really feel the, that fish has been processed. In the short cure, you, you don't really feel the process. Mm -hmm. You change the flavor, the, the flavor of yeah. the fish, right? You add to it. But here, you also change the consistency of the fish. Yeah. 
All right, I will slice up the bagels and we'll serve it up. Bagels ready. Bagels. It's a brunch. Okay. It's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Look how beautiful. It's okay. Really and nice. little creme fraiche. There we go. Let's eat. So happy to share this with you. Thank you. <laughs>